Hello there. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on the part of the world you're listening to me from. I see you your friend, Peter Sabiodo, and you are welcome to another lesson on Bed Series Biology. Explain this. But just like our last lesson, we ain't going to look looking at biology this time around, but we are having a broader and a deeper look and consideration on the concept of education. Okay, so we want to look at education from the point of view of what it is or should be designed to do. Now, let me say from this outset that um, I'm not going to be pretend like to be an expert in this presentation, but having been in the system for about 26 years plus, and having three sons in the system who are undergraduates, I think I have some idea and experience and knowledge to say something about what I have experienced and what the students I'm having to teach, what they go through. I mean, like I said in the last lesson about what school won't teach anyone. Schools won't teach because schools ain't designed to address those issues. There are curricula, set modalities and things like that, models, syllabi. You just follow the routine. So it's like routine there. So you, if you expect anything to change, it's, it's not going to change any soon. You need a vibrant and a, a very exemplary person, a personality in that sector who is in government or who is influential to change things. So we want to look at the perspective to education and what every one of us who is in that sector, in the system, should expect. Of course, those of us who are directly involved as educators, we have a lot of work to do to help our students. There ain't going to be any teacher if there are no students. Students are the reasons why we still exist as teachers and schools exist because of students. So we should be looking towards changes that will engender and foster excellence among our students, not, not only for the sake of passing examination, but being able to cope outside the four walls of a school or any kind of um, environment that has to do with normal, regular, formal schooling. So that educational sector, that's that environment, what do we want to talk about? So I can always say, please, let's generate a forum discussion. I would so much love your feedbacks, your comments on this video at the end of the day. So let's go into the discussion for today and then let's find out and educate ourselves some more. Now, the word education is derived from Latin words. All the words you're seeing on the board, I'll be on the screen, they are all Latin words. You have educare, educere, educatum, and then you've got the other two. So don't be tempted to look at them as English words. There ain't any English words among them. Like I said, educare, educere, educatum. They are all talking about to so look at what they are supposed to mean, to bring out, to nourish, to lead out. Okay, the act of teaching pedagogy, and so if education does not bring out anything, all if if all education does is to just pump into and stuff and stuff, then from this outset, from this introduction, we can begin to ask ourselves: the the education that we run in our nation, our state, is it geared towards bringing out what is deep in the psyche, in the mind of of the students? Is it lead them out of ignorance? into understanding, in, into being deep, into being high, okay, high and lofty in their mindset, in their reasoning and their faculty. So let's to as you consider those those definitions of what educare and educare they are all supposed to mean. It's supposed to help you and I to understand perfectly what education should be designed to accomplish in the minds of the students. And so we talk about education as a systematic process through which a child or an adult, which means that there's no point where education will, cannot be accomplished. Nobody is too old to learn anything. Okay? They always say that um, if you stop learning, you start dying. The brain grows. The more, the more you learn, the more your brain remains vital and, uh, and agile. So your brain will keep being able to process stimuli and information if you keep firing your, your brain with knowledge. It's often said that um, aging can be slowed down 
by constant learning so it's expected that no matter your age you should keep learning because when you learn you acquire knowledge you gain experience from other people's life um, experiences and things like that and then of course you get skilled because knowledge is power it enables and empowers you and so you should have a, an attitude because education should open if you look at the low the right the lower corner of, of the screen you will see book and you see book there education is supposed to enlighten open the mind somebody said the mind is like a parachute okay it expands when you feel it so when you feel a balloon a parachute with air it expands so let's try to expand the scope of our reasoning as we go on and so for education to or educare to have any meaning whatsoever to make the right kind of impact we should not raise informed robots who are just mechanized programmed to think in a particular manner meaning if it's not like this it can be like this largely and for the most part that is what we are doing now in most educational systems we are raising well-informed people robots they are so well informed that they are so neck deep in what they have learned that they cannot think differently i, I tried at, at the close of the last lesson on that what school won't teach i had recommended two videos one particular video i always i can never get tired watching is that india movie called three idiots it's very unlike all kinds of movies it, it, it tries to diagnose what what education is all about you can see two individuals one program to just cram and pass and then one who, who, who was who was questioning who was probing who just wants to learn to apply and you see how their lives turned out at the end of the day so let's look at five reasons education is so vital because education is so important to be educated it's not um we, this is not to disparage education but the point is to try to and to, to, to revamp it, to try to re-engineer the sector in a way that it can make the right kind of impacts, not just garbage in, garbage out. It should, it should promote reasoning. It should, it should promote deep thinking. In other words, critical thinking should be what should be. In other words, it should begin to help our students to think critically so that something in them will be, we, we begin to bubble forth and be, they, they will be the best they can be. I mean, if you look forward to a class where students will challenge the teacher, okay, we have, the student will come up with new ideas and the, student, the teacher will be forced to go and look beyond textbooks and search further. Because wait, if you're not careful, if the teacher just uses the same kinds of textbooks, the same kinds of notes that he or she has been using for a long time and just keeps pouring out the same stuff without any improvement, so to say. And so, there should be self-dependency, meaning you educate the child to be able to reason and form his own idea and be able to ensure that he understands not just not just not just pouring out what has been put in him or her. And then education should build the confidence of the child. The moment you begin to have a structure where the, the child loses confidence because of grades, grades can create a caste can create a, a, a class system where you see the, the good and the bad. I know in some schools they have what they call commendation list and there's this rat race where everybody is trying, even parents even put pressure on their child. I've seen many, many children, many students come and tell me confidentially that they just passed examination. All they did was just cram overnight and just somehow they, they, got, they got lucky and they passed. So passing an examination does not actually mean that you understood what you learned. It does not mean that you are better than those who have lower grades. So, your confidence should be built because because you didn't just learn you understood you comprehended and you could apply what you have learned and so you can begin to look at the world from a broader perspective beyond the forwards of the school and so the human race can be better everything that man is enjoying today it came from some people who dared to challenge the status quo they tried they tried to believe that things can get better just look at the right brothers with the, what they did the first aeroplane, the first um, the, the first bulb, the first car, the first automobile, the first of everything came from a probing mind, a mind that refused to accept the status quo, believing that something better. That is what education should do: open the minds of the students, whether you are young or old. And we look at another perspective to education. Okay. There's the intrinsic part, meaning something that you are born with, your natural tendency and ability. Sometimes school suppresses the child's 
natural tendencies and natural abilities because the child is programmed to just do things a particular way, raise in a particular way. So the intrinsic can be destroyed and the child loses its own identity. And then if the child is helped, the child can become instrumental to change in to engender and foster and bring forth a better society. So if you look at that chart you're looking at on the screen, individual possibility should translate into individual efficiency. If you raise individuals who, are, who, who believe in themselves, they can change the society for a better. And then you can have social possibility because a better individual on his or her own is, is a better part of the society. And so social possibility should also translate into social efficiency. The more people that we are transforming and changing and helping in their mindset, okay, the better the society will be. We will not be raising monsters who are just intellectuals but cannot. All they do is just they are programmed to reason in a particular way. They are not flexible whatsoever and they are not adaptable. So let's look at education, how it's been described by experts or some kinds of people, okay, from researches. So it means that what education does is that a reality just hits you. A reality, a kind of realization just came at you. You just woke up suddenly. I mean, just imagine reading a text if I did, there are some things that you will read that will come alive and then you begin to wonder, wow. I mean, there are some, some things that you never that you have been seeing, but you never understood why or how. Suddenly from books, from being informed, because what education should do is to inform and enlighten, okay, to lead you out of ignorance, okay, and open your mind's eye and you begin to see differently. And so you can begin to question things, whether they are cultural or religious or, or your own personal uh, in idiosyncrasies, you begin to probe. So all kinds of obstacles, because there are, there are obstacles that can limit the, the growth of the mind of an individual. They can be economic, the kind of family you came from. If your parents can't afford books, they can't afford some things, you'll be limited. Socially, who are the kind of people you relate with? You can be limited by your social placement. And politically, if you have leaders who are not visionary, leaders who don't understand that, the essence of education, they will run things at ground. They will just run things anyhow. They will run things by routine. If you remember, if you look at the story of Toyota and Honda in Japan, how they, how, how they came up and how they have evolved. The Hyundai series, for example, the Kia, I mean, those things came, they, they, they came and they are still coming from an innovative mind. Once you educate somebody else, you begin to create new things out of what seemed ordinary. So we look at Martin Luther King, the, that, that man said a lot, I mean, he talked about education, he said, I have a dream, and that dream is still alive till today. He was talking about if you have intelligent individuals who lack character, what you are going to have is no true education. A true education must educate both the mind and the person. You can educate individuals, I mean, we have seen individuals who want to learn computer science just to be able to hack into systems just to show that they can i mean they, they are proficient in what they've learned they want to learn hacking i mean many things are going on today you see biochemists who are trying to produce gen gen generic drugs that can help athletes to cheat you see all kinds of things going on so people are being educated and then they want to learn particular skills or abilities or knowledge for the for the wrong kind of reasons so here we have martin luther talking about the fact that intelligence plus character that is true education remember the theme of our discussion in this lesson is what is true education and to discuss education we can't delineate education from the concept of intelligences because intelligence has been either overrated or underrated depending on the perspective and the background the listener is coming from now from the point of view of psychology we have four kinds of intelligence now we've got the iq which is very common everybody talks about iq 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 and things like that and then we've got the emotional quotient which is not often talked about but we have we just we will discuss and broach the subjects in this lesson and we've got social quotient and lastly adversity quotient now on intelligent quotient iq it's a measure of your intelligence, how you can 
process information, how you can pass examination, memorize stuff and recall lessons, recall names, recall graphs, recall movies. So your intelligence, how much you can store, how much you can reproduce, how much you can show those things so in other words this is mental in nature intelligence quotient talks about your mentality your just it's just about your mental ability your mental proficiency it doesn't tell us that's why you've had some some people who are intellectual but they are monsters i mean you can see those who, some people have raped some people have killed so all kinds of things are happening because people can be intelligent and use intelligence for the wrong kind of purposes then emotional quotients now everybody needs to be stable emotionally because sometimes things don't always go the way we wanted them to be now this is a measure of your ability to maintain peace with others meaning you have to have good relationship with people and then not only that you have to do some things okay because you can be emotionally sound or emotionally down so I mean, when you show responsibility, either as a spouse or as a teacher or as an employee and employer and things like that, in every kind of relationship, how, how, how do you relate with other people? Do you respect other people's boundaries, other people's privileges, or you just insist on your own rights? You have to be right all of the time. So emotional quotient talks about how you can ensure you keep your relationship. In other words, consideration for others, other, others, other people's um, opinions other people's own mindset you can't be right all of the time you have to understand that nobody has the the the, the ultimate knowledge on in everything nobody has the supremacy we all are ignorant one way or the other if, if your math professor may not be that good in english may not be that good in psychology or other thing you are a professor of that area that you majored in so respect other people and social caution here this, this, the society talks about the different individuals relating with one another. Now, this is a measure of your ability to make friends and sustain friendship. Remember, it's different from emotional quotient. We are talking about how you, how you, how you, how you feel. Okay, that is emotional. How you feel about other people? Oh, you are wrong. You hurt me. You hate me. You don't like me. That's emotional. But in the society, how do you fit into? In other words if you are good academically do you relate with other people who you think are not as good as you are that's social quotient because you are rich you don't relate with those you think are poorer than you or you have you think you are fine and you look down on so social quotient talks about how you value other people how you respect other people and so you look at it for example that those who have very high eq meaning emotional quotient and somewhat high sq social quotient they go further in life than those who just have IQ. You can be a nerd, for example, okay? Or you, you can just be a nerd, just be in one corner, read stuff, cram things, but you don't relate. That is a boring lifestyle. Uh, so for if you're, if you're in Nigeria trying to study in UK and in North and South America, for example, you may have to fill forms, okay? You can form and things like that. Where yeah, you'll be given a, a space to fill, okay? Meaning market yourself. You call it open reference, meaning why? So the, the form is staying, okay? So the admission officer in that college you want to go to that university is asking you why do i want to give you admission so you got a star of course what the hell you got b and things like that they are used to grades but imagine there are many people who gain admission because they can play football they've got skills they they, they i mean they, they've been they do social work okay so they've done social work they've been in the hospital they play key drum drum set they are cheerleaders i mean some institutions value social quotient how you relate because when you are in a foreign land how do you cope for example life is not just about books exams will come and go but when you step out you are going to see all kinds of people some will deliberately make you very angry some will piss you off some will just irritate you how do you handle insults how do you handle disrespect and things like that that's a measure of your social quotient and they always say that um, if you want to go far go alone okay no baggage because you won't have to relate with anybody. If you're working in a group or in a team, some will slow you down. There are all kinds of members of a team. Okay? So if you want to go further, then go together. So look at different statements. If you want to go far, okay, go alone. 
We want to go, so sorry, we want to go fast rather. Sorry for that mix up. We want to go fast because you, I mean, you just feel light, no? Because friends and relations can be like baggages. Colleagues have, because you have to sample everybody's opinion, take everybody's perspectives before you finalize the discussion. But if you, so if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, because there are things that you will not see that somebody will see. So to go far and to go fast, there are different perspectives, different things entirely. If you want to go fast, go alone. Don't worry about anybody else. You may be so fast that you will run into problems along the way. But if you are going to go far, okay, there are people in your team or your group that will have seen what you didn't see, who have the experience that you don't have. If you listen to them, learn from them, then you will go farther than your own ability because we are all limited one way or the other. So choose between going fast and going far in your life's journey. And the last quotient, adversity quotient. How do you cope when things go your way? You can be the best, for example, and you failed an examination. <clears throat> it happens many times. You can be you can be sick towards an examination. Things may not always go the way you wanted them to be. Now, this is what happens when rich kids, very prominent society members, somebody who thought he was he was so good that he could not mess up. You think you are morally upright, you can't go wrong. See, the moment you are even proud, the moment you look down at other people, oh, I'm this, I'm that, and you look down that you can't make mistakes, you are too perfect, you are setting yourself off for failure, okay? But if things went wrong, how do you cope? How do you bounce back, okay? Disappointments will always come. It's, it's part of life, but we learn forward. You don't stay there. You've made a mistake, dust yourself up, and move on. So your adversity quotient talks about how you can adapt to unpleasant and unsavory and un un unfavorable situations. Everybody has to do that. I mean, relations can abandon you, your, your, your girlfriend or your boyfriend can, can, can disappoint you, things can go wrong. And then suicide is the next thing you think of because you lost hope on life. That's not the end of life. Always remember the story of, of KFC. Okay, that man was about to commit suicide and then he done on him that he had an unfinished business. And so that battered what we call KFC franchise that you see the world over today. Still on adversity quotient, okay, you need to be exposed to other areas of life. I mean, sometimes what you are doing is what is causing the problem. Change routine. Do something out of the routine that you have developed for yourself sometimes put your earpiece or your airport in your ear just listen to one song try jazz okay try rmb soul instrumental play game play chess play draft play ludo just have fun life is too damn boring to just stay with books you have to do something to take your mind off you need some sort of distraction sometimes balance work and play don't be too serious Losing up, try to laugh. It doesn't cost anything to laugh. If I laughter and smile, they are damn cheap. Cheaper than your pies, your pizza. It's so cheap to live. So cheap to smile. Try to imagine. Some people are so serious, they at least smile. So as I'm talking to you now, think of something to make you smile. I'm smiling right, right now. I can't see you, but I'm smiling. Think of something you can smile at. That funny friend, that movie you watch, that meme and things like that. Think of something to make you laugh and smile and ease the tension. So you failed, you messed up. Shake it off. You won't be the first and the last. Failures are part of life's journey. But we learn from our setbacks and we make the most of it all. The success in final, neither is failure fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. A measure of your adversity quotient. Mr. Chaudhry was the leader, a ruler. I mean, can you imagine preparing for war and then things went wrong and he was saying, look, we have to just admit that we messed up. So no matter how well you plant, there are things, there are exigencies. There are things that you will never imagine. Imagine you are traveling on a journey and your car tire got bust or deflated. That's everything and you have to, you are so dressed and then you have to, your dress go dirty while you are trying to fix the tie and things like that. This can just happen. But please loosen up and try to cheer up and smile. 
find a reason to smile. Look for a movie, a comedy. Don't be too serious. And so, because of the pressure of the right to race in the classroom to score the highest mark, get, the, get all the awards, people have lost their lives, people have lost friends, they've lost their emotions, they don't feel anything anymore. You can succeed in class and in school and fail outside there. So, academic success doesn't guarantee that you succeed financially. In fact, the most, I, I, I want to challenge us, if you are listening to me, how many first class people have you seen who are ambassadors of the company? In Nigeria, where I stay, for example, I want somebody else to comment. I, I would like to hear that. How many first class graduates, the best the graduating student of a university who was an ambassador for MTN, Globacom, or Airtel, or any brand like Coca-Cola? Is athletes, is it's musicians that you see, okay? I mean, you, you, can, you can imagine, after all that sweat and labor, nobody in the educational sector is seen as worthy to be the face an ambassador of any brand in the society, not Coca-Cola, not Pepsi, not any telecom service provider, nothing. They will prefer somebody else who sings, who, who pulls the crowd. It's about crowd. It's about crowd. So please learn that lesson. You can be successful in everything but failing marriage. Ask, ask Bill Gates, ask Elon Musk. It can happen. And so you may not be fulfilled, even though you have the best of degrees, you have all the degrees of life, you can still be unfulfilled and you may not be properly integrated because you've lost friends you've lost your spouse or your children and things like that because you were down too busy focusing on what you were studying and you forgot that life is still waiting for you because after the everything is over you can't read forever who is there to catch you when you fall so we are into what is referred to as the fourth industrial revolution if there's a fifth one evolving now with the advent of ai we've gone far from the fourth the issue is this when i was growing up in the 70s and the 80s there were things that were all over the place that they did there was the how many homes had tv then then we had black and white and the color television and then you began to have the dvd and then you had the long play then you began to have all kinds now the world is at your fingertips so there's internet of things everything you've got the robotics you got virtual reality where things look real than you can imagine and the, 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 what AI is doing on artificial intelligence only God knows the extent to which this, this area, this knowledge and revelation can go. It's, it's creating all kinds of possibilities and it's very scary. I don't know about you but I am scared because AI can be used for all kinds of sinister and negative reasons. As good as it is, it also opens up, it opens us up to manipulation, to falsehood, to lies, to destruction. Let's begin the round of what then is true education. True education is the harmonious development of the physical, the mental, the, the moral, that is spiritual, and social faculties. All of them must be integrated and coordinated together for a life of service to man and to humanity. You can't study for yourself alone. But Carson had fantastic ideas, hopeless cases. He had, he, he didn't mind to lose his, his, his certificate as a medical doctor, as a surgeon. He tried things. He just wanted to save life. So you have to look at all these perspectives of life, these social faculties, physical, mental, spiritual. Unfortunately, today, we just, religion is being used to manipulate people. Sorry to say that. Religion is being used for negative reasons to manipulate people. Religion is supposed to clean the mind okay open the mind of individuals but with these kinds of things we see these days the manipulation the falsehood the lies in region i mean tribal issues are coming up now cultural issues we are becoming more of enemies than friends we should have unity in diversity let me say that again we should have unity in diversity just look at football you've got the goalkeeper you've got the central back the left full back right full back midfielders everybody playing a role the tribe and tongue and religious leaning or tendency or inclination should not matter if we come together. So religion, whether you have been taught, because there is formal and there is informal education, I've dwelt basically on my own area, which is formal, which is what you learn in school. But outside school, everywhere there, I mean, greeting, I mean, courtesy, okay? Those things are informal. Things that you pick up on the street every day, everywhere you are, you are learning something. So look at it, everyone. 
Religion should make us better individuals, not to suppress other people, not to feel inferior, not, not to feel superior or better than other people. So, Charlotte, you should look at yourself. If you are not there yet, don't envy anybody. Be proud of where you are on the way to where you are going to. Don't be satisfied. Don't be complacent. Just accept where you are and know that it's going to get better as you work harder. And so, if you have a, defi- a deformity or deficiency, just move on. So, education should be total physical mental your cycle how do you think how do you feel how do you see things that is what school should be doing school should be ensuring that apart from mental you school the individual you educate the mind of the individuals let the child be socially placed situated not place create if you create a class some people will be so-called stars and so-called that all kinds of things have been done in schools today. and some people may not be good today but things can change and i've seen people who are good in school and life turned around and they are not the way they used to they thought they were anymore because like you said the last lesson what school won't teach you is what life is outside the rules in school are entirely different from the street rules street rules are wild they don't respect anybody okay so please understand that perspective as you go on with your life's journey. So round off. If you have questions and comments on this last two discussion we have had so far, the previous one on um, what school won't teach us, and then this one now, what is true education? Matter the school you attend, matter what degrees you have, you still have to keep learning, and we have to work together. No matter your, your, your level, we all have together to ensure that education does what it's meant to do, to transform our lives, to, to harmonize all, the social, all, all those faculties of the human personality and make us all better, not manipulating people for your own selfish ends. So for comments and, and, and questions, send them to my WhatsApp, my email, my Instagram, my YouTube handle. Let's generate a fora together. Okay, let us have fora platform for discussion. And as we discuss, our society shall be the better and we all shall benefit from it all. If you enjoyed this lesson, share, like, okay, and comment, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel and please let others also learn and benefit from our videos. Thank you for listening. See you next time. Bye.